Uh, good evening. Thank you for coming. Uh, Eli and I both thank you for coming. I wanted to say, uh, Eli's from New York. Grew up in New York. Yeah. Uh, and uh, w one of the interesting things he said uh, in his biography was that he likes to write about secrets. That's, that's what you're supposed to be doing, I thought. So uh, I was really glad to see his work. One of the things that fascinated, fascinated me about uh, Eli's work, and I don't know whether you're going to read that, but he, he, he um, there are two poets. I think one was um, Wallace Stevens, and he plays with poets. He, he doesn't just take the assignment and just deal with it. But uh, I got the sense that, that uh, I've never had him as a student, but I got the sense that he took your assignment and said yes. <laughs> and then began to actually discover some poetry behind it. So that's what fascinated me about his work. And uh, I'm waiting to hear some secrets. <laughs> Eli. Thank you. So I'm just going to begin by reading some poems that I worked on in Nathan Hox's class last year. Um, in the winter, and that have to do with my family, um, and also are kind of about dreams. So the first poem is called Bury the Hatchet. I brandished a butcher's hatchet and buried it right in her face. Now I've made peace, I said, in the dream I had 29 years after she died. Pus oozed from the weary warm blue sacks under my grandmother's eyes. I heard her speaking quietly to me. She rode in a red convertible with the top down in Memphis, Tennessee, thin blue capillaries in her thighs. She smelled like warm challah, no, like the pearls around her neck. No, I don't know what she smelled like. I never got to smell her. My mother says she would have spoiled me. You are the pumpkin king, she would have said to me. No, I am no pumpkin king, said the hatchet, speaking for me, buried in her face. She's buried under dry stones in a hot desert in Eretz Yisrael. She thinks it's Tennessee, but she doesn't have a brain to think. She doesn't have ears to hear. She was my grandmother. Now she whispers defeated through my mother's mouth. I lied to you when I told you you were a king. The next um, poem is called Dancing Bodies. It was time to go. Pink slowly turned to black in the dawn sky over the mall, the church, and the homeless man. What do I have to show for all of this? Behind the bamboo screens and pipes played by a band of dancing bodies. Dear mom, dear, dear mom and dad, I can't stop listening, and I can't find your blessed bodies. Please, the dark hearkens. No sound but the barks pleasing barking. I look out and there, the lights of villages in the hilltops sprinkled by the dark gods like rainwater. No, I could never return to those rainy, glittering lights of those far-off villages. No, I turned from them long ago. The next poem I'm going to read is something I wrote really recently. It's kind of different. Um, it's kind of a work in progress. Doesn't have to do with my family, at least in any manifest way. Um, and it's called Tokyo with an I. T-O-K-I-O. Tokyo. The blotch-faced boy is looking at me through my window and telling me something, but before I can hear, I look at his blotched face. Behind him is the dark blue Tokyo glass sky in the heavy black apartment building. The blotch-faced boy whispers to me, and this time it's all I can hear. The radiator stops spitting onto my ears, and the boy whispers. He says, draw the building in your bed tonight. It goes all the way through the canals from my ears into my heart. Draw the building in your bed tonight. But I decide not to do that and fade instead into a sea that is dark without words or masks. And there I see the blotch-faced boy looking at me softly through my window. He wants a drawing of the eyes in the head of the slaughtered goat, in the hands of the great priest, ankle deep in blood, in the holy room with vaulted ceilings that is the black silhouette of the apartment building against the dark blue Tokyo glass sky. The last poem I'm going to read 
is the one that Ed was talking about. Um, and it's inspired by Wallace Stevens' is The Idea of Order at Key West. Um, so just to give you a sense of that language um, and also it as a reference for my poem, I'm going to read the last two stanzas. Ramon Fernandez, tell me if you know why when the singing ended and we turned toward the town, tell why the glassy lights, the lights in the fishing boats at anchor there, as the night descended, tilting in the air, mastered the night and portioned out the sea, fixing emblazoned zones and fiery poles, arranging, deepening, enchanting night. Oh, blessed rage for order, pale Ramon. The makers rage to order words of the sea, words of the fragrant portals, dimly starred, and of ourselves and of our origins in ghostlier demarcations, keener sounds. So my poem is called Rage for Order, Pale Ramon, and it's about my dad. Pale Ramon's milky hand rests on my father's olive green skin. They sat together in the garden. That afternoon, my father resembled the pine trees in the backyard, tall and sympathetic with bark that appeared smooth from a distance. Ramon Fernandez, tell me if you know what my father's skin feels like to your milky hand. Could I caress him for a moment? The rough barks split and sapped rivets containing what I can but imagine, pale Ramon, tales of his immigrant mother queen of the pines, her arguments with Benjamin, his first love, the smell of her hair and the shape of her body, the taste of his tears when Hutch died. What is it like to lose a best friend, father? Oh, only you could tell me, Ramon, whether those tears still run through my father's rivets and of their taste. Will my father ever tell me how he came to stand tall as the pines and how his head came to rest, bent in mourning? That's it. Thank you.